Coming up on Ag Week TV, area farmers and commodity groups get to tell the U.S. Ag Secretary what they need. Mexican soybean processing plants are switching over to South American sources because they're concerned about NAFTA. The story coming up. We're at Pearly, Minnesota, where farmers are keeping an eye on their ears. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Rose Dunn. U.S. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue heard what's on the minds of farmers and ranchers during his recent trip to Fargo, and he promised to take that information back to Washington. Perdue got a first-hand look at the importance of ag research going on at the Ag Research Center and Greenhouse at NDSU. Then he sat down with about 20 farmers, ranchers, and representatives of ag groups. They had the chance to share their concerns in a face-to-face -face meeting with the secretary with the hopes of influencing ag policy. What would you tell the Ag Secretary if you had the chance? I sat in on the roundtable meeting that also included North Dakota's congressional delegation, Governor Doug Burgum, and former Governor and U.S. Ag Secretary Ed Schaefer. We're here to find out what's working, what's not working, what you want to do. One of the main concerns was the new farm bill, especially as it will cover crop insurance. With regards to uh, crop insurance and, and all the safety nets that I'm sure uh, my colleagues around the table are going to talk about, uh, we know that uh, there may not be room to make some big steps forward, but if possible we'd like to take some small steps forward and we sure and heck can't afford to go backwards. We don't write the farm bill, but you've got uh, members of the Ag Committee uh, here that, uh, that do that but they look to us for advice and consultation and data and information. It's very important to get out here from them directly, and that's why we're here, and we got a lot of information this morning. Several also expressed concerns about the president's position on trade. But if I lose trade, it kills me. i got to have trade. Barley relies on trade. Wheat relies on trade. We have to have trade. We need to get bilaterals going on the TPP as well. When Sonny Perdue and, and, and our president, Donald Trump, get together and they're talking shop, we need to be heard about this fair trade, the art of the deal. We got to get the art right on the deal. I will be anxious until we get uh, NAFTA recertified, reauthorized and improved, modernized NAFTA, and then address the other issues around the world with our uh, other uh, uh, importing countries that we depend on. Uh, you know that 20 cents out of every ag dollar uh, comes from exports. So trade worldwide is uh, is important. They also emphasize the importance of wetlands regulation. Wetland determinations, here's mine. This is for half my farm. Water is a critical issue, certainly. We hope to look at the, uh, the wetland determination uh, here, give farmers some consistency there through our NRCS efforts. Farmers are, are generally compliant people. They want to follow the rules. They want to be good conservationists. We just got to give them good rules from place to place to place that they can, they can follow. And he heard about the importance of renewable fuel standards to corn growers. I'm going to go a little bit farther than the corn growers. They're pushing E15. Ethanol creates a demand. We need E30. E30 would be the demand creator that would get our prices up so we wouldn't have to rely on the government program so much. The more gallons of ethanol that we use in the U.S. is more corn demand. Uh, it goes straight to the bottom line of the farmer. Purdue invited the participants to give him written comments, and the secretary assured everyone he would take their concerns back to Washington. Trade officials just wrapped up the eighth round of renegotiation talks on NAFTA. This comes as President Trump proposed tariffs on steel and aluminum. He says he will exempt Canada and Mexico if they agree to a new NAFTA deal. While in Mexico recently, Michelle Rook talked to ag companies that are concerned about the future of the trade deal and what they're doing to prepare. This soybean processing plant here in Mexico gets 70% of its soybeans from the U.S., but because of NAFTA, has been switching some of their source over to Brazil and South America. They're preparing in case either country withdraws from NAFTA or the tariffs on U.S. imports, including soybeans, return. Right now with the situation, we don't know if maybe taxes or something, we are moving and starting to explore the South American market. However, Mexican ag companies agree South America isn't their first choice for imports. It's not the best way. The transits for the vessels are much, much longer. The freight rates are much more higher. So for sure we will prefer to work with the U.S. With Mexico's climate, they import over 90% of their grain and oil seed needs, and the majority comes from the U.S., so tensions are running high. 
almost all, uh, 80% of our formula came from there. So we are very concerned about that. Company officials say NAFTA has been good for both countries and they want to keep the status quo. It's just going to make things complicated. Prices are going to go up. So I think it's a, it, it's a, a tree that must continue. So the hope is all three partners will stay at the table and modernize, but not walk away from the trade deal. I think it's really important that this NAFTA doesn't change anything and, and only reinforce and get better. In Mexico, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Ag giant Syngenta has agreed to pay $1.5 billion to settle a nationwide class action lawsuit. The settlement will go to U.S. corn farmers, grain handling facilities, and ethanol plants. The plaintiffs alleged Syngenta sold a variety of genetically modified corn before it was approved in China, which rejected the corn, leading to loss of income. The settlement covers corn priced after September 15, 2013. All farmers are eligible for the settlement, including those who opted out out of previous Syngenta lawsuits. Farming really takes a toll on hearing. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll see what technology is doing to help. Dream of building a new home, garage, shop, barn, or commercial space? What if you could create your ideal building for less than you ever imagined? Want to build a cabin in the woods, a workshop, storage space? Then call your Hanson personal building designer now and we'll include professionally engineered sealed plans to your new building absolutely free. Save up to thousands of dollars. Build your ideal dream for less than you ever imagined. Call now. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Get your row crops off to the right start with an Early Riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH Early Riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH Early Riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Superior Grain Equipment offers storage and drying solutions designed for your grain handling needs. Mixed flow grain dryers from Superior offer even heating to reduce heat stress cracking so you get higher quality grain, higher test weights, and better prices. Plus, they use half the energy of conventional screen dryers. Experience cost savings and superior grain conditioning. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment have to put up with a lot of very loud noise in their work and over the years it takes a toll on their hearing. Although equipment has gotten quieter over the years, farming is still very damaging to hearing. But there is help available. Michael Pates talked to a couple of farmers who have found relief through technology. Years of farming with noisy equipment have taken a toll on Paul Hoglum's hearing. It's one of those things that you put up with as a farmer. You try to wear earmuffs or earplugs when you're doing it, but yeah, there's things, certain things you have to hear too, so there's times when you don't use something, hearing protection, as much as, as you should. That hearing loss started to be a problem for him and his family. Probably about 10 years ago I noticed that when we were traveling together in the car, which we do a lot because we live out in the country, he could not hear me. And maybe he doesn't choose to, but you know, <laughs> I think he's trying to hear me and, uh, and he just couldn't anymore. I think he realized that he needed to preserve his marriage, so he went in and got hearing aids in both ears. 
I needed to do something about it and it has helped. It makes talking to my grandchildren more fun because they can't quite understand why grandpa can't hear all the time. I've lost the majority of mine in the last few years. Lewis Maynard also blames his hearing loss on loud farm and trucking work. I, I haul gravel in the summertime about loud machinery, you know, asphalt crushers. When you hear the beeping, raise your hand. Maynard was forced to get hearing aids when he failed a trucking physical because of hearing loss, but he says they've made a big difference. David Cruz of Cheyenne Hearing Service says there's a lot of new technology that can help farmers or anyone hear better. We're able to do things digitally and technologically that really 31 years ago I never would have dreamed we'd have this kind of technology. Hoglum got hearing aids several months ago and he's still getting used to them. I guess I wish I didn't have to have them, but I do notice that they do help me hear better. And he can also take them out when he doesn't want to hear me. So that works out well, too. <laughs> While farm equipment has improved over the years, it's still hard on the ears. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Purley, Minnesota. Mikkel has much more on the problem of hearing loss among farmers in the next Ag Week magazine. The dairy industry has reached such a crisis that some farmers are getting a sobering message with their milk checks, the 800 number for suicide prevention. For the third straight year, prices are at the bottom of the barrel, giving some farmers no choice but to give up the life they love. Kevin Wallivan has one of their stories. Daryl Spillum of Rural Holly loves living the farm life. Today, cracking corn for a good friend he now works for. The two custom-raised calves for a larger dairy in Minnesota. Daryl is still around cows. It's just now, he's not milking them anymore. I usually milked around 70. I was up to 90 for a while, but that was just too much by myself. With poor milk prices looming, Daryl recently decided to stop milking his dairy cows. He got rid of them. It was no easy decision. It's tough to quit something you like to do, but sometimes you have to. It wasn't that long ago when dairy was king here in Clay County. Around 30 years ago, 110 dairy farmers. Today, less than 10. In Minnesota, the number of farmers milking has plummeted from 46,000 in the 1970s to just 3,400 today. The recent low prices that don't seem to budge even has the state ag department in Minnesota hosting listening sessions around the state about stress, suicide, and mental health issues. Farmers like Daryl get it. Stress is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. You got all these bills to pay, and you got you got to feed your cows. If you have them, you have to feed them, and you got to feed them right. And you have to feed your kids. Yeah, and kids eat a lot. <laughs> I got three of them, so. Daryl's boss, David Hang, grew up around dairy, and as he saw bigger dairy farms swallow the small-time operator, he knew he too would have to find a way to farm without the financial risks and headaches. I'm involved in dairy, but I don't have to milk a cow. And I, I really enjoy it. Right now, dairy farmers are getting for their milk what their grandfathers received years ago. At $13 a hundredweight, few can withstand another year of this crushing price cycle. I had to decide what was best for my family and what was good for me, and it worked out very well for both of us, I hope. The dates and places for the Down on the Farm listening sessions can be found at the web address on your screen, or you can call the mental health hotline toll-free as often as needed. Is spring finally on the horizon? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, how local soybeans are finding their way to more countries around the world. Levisol is the most advanced nutrient efficiency solution, making phosphorus, zinc, and other key micronutrients more available to the plant. With three modes of action, it unlocks the nutrients in the soil, it makes the nutrients that it's applied with more available, and it is mobile in the plant for season-long activity. For more information, talk with your agronomy partner or visit WCDST.com. Get ready for the biological revolution. Agzyme by Ag Concepts is the leading biological soil enhancement product on the market today. Agzyme improves soil health and fertilizer efficiency for healthier crops and better yields. Definitely is making a difference. I really feel that it gives me a bump in the soybeans and corn. I would say 55 up to 70 bushel soybeans. We even had as high as 75. Probably the best bang for your buck. Join the biological revolution with Agzyme by Ag Concepts. 
Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. For over 40 years, Northside Implement has been your Gallon Vermeer dealer in Webster, South Dakota and Lidgerwood, North Dakota. With new equipment including feeding, grain handling, haying and skid steer, as well as a nice selection of used equipment including sprayers, spreaders, seeding, as well as tractors and loaders. Northside Implement stands behind the equipment they sell with quality service guaranteed. See us for all your repairs and parts from tillage to skid steer loaders to combines and everything in between. Contact Dave, Liddell, Mike or Chris today at Northside Implement or visit our website for our complete equipment listings. I'm meteorologist Nick Baruziak, filling in for John Wheeler. The mild temperatures will end across the area. We've had a nice little run of those temperatures, 40s and even some spots near 60 degrees. But the lingering winter will continue as chilly temperatures make a return. We have seen some storms this March. Will we see more on the way? of that. Here's what to expect over the next couple of days. Cool weather will reign supreme across the central and northern plains over the next week or so. The warm weather will remain in the south when it does look like it'll be trapped by the jet stream. The jet stream will rise a little bit, but it's not going to really affect uh, the weather across the central and northern United States. Not until we get this cold air mass dump. Again, it looks like another chance for some cold air to really work its way in through the northeast. The warm temperatures will remain in the desert southwest. Eventually, they will work their way east. But just as it looks like we will warm things up, it does look like another Pacific low will bring some cooler temperatures to the western United States, especially the Pacific Northwest for this weekend. And it does look like that'll make things even cooler across the Dakotas. Now, as we head into next week, it does look like that cool air will work its way east. The warm trend continues to push its way out of the central United States into the southeast. And then eventually we will be looking at that warm air rebuilding over the desert southwest, but it doesn't look like it'll extend to us. Instead, it just looks like the next two weeks will be around average but on the cool side of average. The next system will work its way out of our area throughout the next few days. It does look like this has the potential to perhaps turn into yet another nor'easter for parts of the northeast, but then on the west coast, another low develops. This low will bring some rain and snow throughout the California and Oregon areas that will continue to push its way east over our area, but it doesn't look like it'll be here until the weekend. And at this point, again, rain and snow are possible with this. The next low out of the Pacific Northwest looks to track further to the north does look like this is more of a Canadian prairies area, but there will be multiple chances at other systems, including one during next week. And the, there's the potential for even more. Again, nothing too likely at this point, but there are at least the potential for more March storms on their way. So to sum things up, it's a cool trend. The mild weather has ended across the area. We'll see some mild temperatures in our future, but again, on the whole, it does look like we'll see that chilly weather weather lingering around winter is not going to be over quite yet. Now, while there's no major systems on their horizon, it does look like there's at least the possibility of a few more March storms before we close things out and head into April. Get your row crops off to the right start with an early riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH early riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH early riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. 
That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Locally grown soybeans are finding their way to more tables around the world. A trial shipment of food grade soybeans was sent recently from Fargo to Cambodia and Myanmar. Tara Freming, the marketing coordinator at Healthy Food Ingredients, says Asia is a strong soybean market and they're looking at expanding into other countries in that part of the world. That's great news for the local soybean growers. We're excited to, you know, for that aspect as well because we're partnering directly with growers. They know they're growing food that's going for tofu and soy milk overseas and they have that as part of their process in their mind when they're producing these soybeans that its quality is key through that whole production process. The trial shipment of 14 million tons of food grade soybeans is part of the American Soybean Association's World Initiative for Soy in Human Health or WISH program. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Elbow Lake, Minnesota, where Mickle found Brad Larson getting ready for spring. Larson has about 300 Holsteins and also raises corn, soybeans, alfalfa, and typically wheat. But he didn't plant wheat for the first time last year due to low prices. However, he may again this year, since a potential for another drought year could drive prices up. Larson thinks his current soil moisture is good, even though he hasn't had much snow cover. He started planting in April last year and says it went smoothly, but he's not anticipating the same thing this spring. I don't think it's going to be real early, you know. We've had warmer Februarys and Mar early March here, where we've been able to haul them in early. We haven't done too much of it this year yet, so... Certainly a manageable winter for me. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, how National Ag Day is a good opportunity to spread the word about farming. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. 
Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's becoming more important for American ag to promote public awareness of what they do. National Ag Day on March 20th is another opportunity to connect with consumers about food and farming. But it's a job many are reluctant to tackle. Data from the U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance shows fewer than 5,000 agriculturalists engage the public through social media at least three times a month. Really, it's amazing when you post a picture or video, how many people are really interested in, in how their food's growing. And so that's, that's exciting. We need to connect with consumers and honestly through pictures and videos and farmers speaking from the heart and the passion, saying this is what I do every day. I'm here to answer your questions. U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance consists of 102 farm groups and ag companies working to earn consumer trust in U.S. food and agriculture. For more information, check out their website. Submissions are now in for Ag Week's photo contest to celebrate National Ag Day, March 20th. Now it's time to vote for your favorites. Go to agweek.com from March 18th to the 24th to vote. The top five winners will be announced in the March 26th edition of Ag Week magazine, shown on Ag Week TV and on agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.